Hello everyone, in that video I will show you what happened in game between Aaron Nintzovic and uh, Hans Doom. Not so very well known game but still very instructive and very amazing play by white player Aaron Nintzovic. He started with c4, e6, e4, c5, knight c3, Knight c6 and f4. That opening setup after knight f3 and d3 will be so called Arcanum of Aaron in search and black answer with d6. Knight f3. Still white keeps both possibilities to play bishop e2, bishop e3 setup or to switch to some England with g3, bishop g2. Same time, black wants to play like in close Sicilian with installing knights on d4 and support that knight with bishop on g7 and another knight to e6. But in that moment, black just chose wrong move order by playing g6. That's bad move. What's the point? Well. There are red markers on squares d6, f6 and h6 which are used for potentially weak squares. What's the point? After playing g6, black bishop probably will be placed there on g7, but then pawn on d6 will be desperately weak. If black bishop goes to e7, then there will be weakness on h6 and pawn g6 will be unnecessary. Well, black must choose between bishop e7 and bishop g7. Probably with playing g6 he will play bishop g7, but then, as I said, pawn d6 will be in danger. How to use that weaknesses? How can Aron Nintzovic use that weak squares? Well, obviously with opening position after d4. Without d4, black will play bishop g7. Knight d4 and other knight to c6, supporting knight on d4 and controlling that hole. So, after g6, immediately d4 was perfect reaction from white and black did another mistake. Much better move was c takes d4 and defending, patiently defending after bishop e7 and knight f6. Bishop g7 was played. That looks as let's say natural move, but that is a big mistake. Let's see what happens. d takes e, black has to take. Queen d8, king takes, and e5. Perfect move e5. What's the point? As first, that move closes bishop on g7, making that bishop very bad. As second, bishop c8 now stays very bad, because pawn on e6 is fixed, closing that bishop. As third, that move controls weak squares d6 and f6 as you can see and as the fourth knight comes to e4 not only attacking c5 pawn but also controlling weak squares d6 and f6 black answer with h5 normal move good side of that move is preventing white g4 and by that way simply making safe knight on f5 well black knight goes to h6 and f5 and after h5 that knight will be saved there but there is also dark side of move h5 yes of course g5 square is desperately weak now and white knight on g5 in future will make very dangerous pressure against pawn f7 
and also there will not be possibility for black to attack that knight with pawn. Bishop p3 and now there are so many green arrows and so many green markers on board. What's the point? Well, by using red and green markers you will see bad and good squares, bad and good pieces respectively. In black camp there are only red markers. You can see desperately weak rooks on a8 and h8 and very bad and closed bishops on c8 and g7. Also d6, f6 and g5 as earlier are very weak square, very easily accessible by white pieces, especially by knight on e4 in future. White, both knights, rook on a1 and bishop on e3 are very active in that moment. White next move is long casting and rook goes to open file d1 and uh, simply for a long time there will not be black opponent rook. White bishop from f1 can go to d3 and e4 if necessary to make pressure on b7 and on knight on c6. White bishop on e3 can not only attacking c5 but also can be transferred to f2 and further to h4, controlling very important diagonal. White knights on c3 and f3 soon will dominate on e4 and maybe on b5 and g5 if necessary. Since that moment, black can only care about defense with no chances to say even a draw with no chances to find any counterplay. In that moment, with precise white play, game will be almost over. Black played b6, natural move defending c5, long cancelling, king e7, and now there are few possibilities for white. Knight b5 is one of them, intending transferring knight to c7 or d6, but also it can be done with knight e4. Still, I think bishop f2 is most precise move. What's the point? White wants to set bishop on h4 before black knight comes to f5, preventing it. So, knight b5 and knight e4 will be played later. Now, bishop f2 is the right move, and after knight h6, bishop h4 goes with check. King f8 and bishop d3. Once again, Knight e4 will be a reasonable option. Also, Knight b5 will be a reasonable option. But still, White prefers Bishop d3. What's the point? Well, after Bishop d3, then Black Bishop b7, White will play Bishop e4, setting strong pressure on that diagonal, intending Rook d7. Let's mark it with green, of course. Black has to answer with knight a5, and after knight a5, bishop b7, knight b7, white knight easily can go to e4, and there will not be bishop b7, which can make some threats against white knight on e4. Let's see now, very passive black pieces, all are in the corners and, and the rims. Rook a8, rook h8, very passive rooks. Knight b7, bishop g7. Only white knight can go to f5. To some active position, but still, that knight cannot help to black to avoid loss. White rooks soon will be doubled on d file. White knights will occupy b5, e4, 
g5 for instance bishop dominates on that diagonal black can already dream about rook d8 and reducing material which will be in his favor so black simply cannot exchange his passive pieces for white active pieces white continues with full pressuring rook d7 and after black rook b8 doubling with rook h d1 what can black do he wants to do some regrouping after king g8 maybe with bishop f8 i don't know what black wanted to do in that position maybe best move will be simply resigning game what can white do now so many good plans rook c7 with doubling will be one option knight b5 will be option number two knight e4 with knight f6 or bishop f6 option number three and knight g5 making pressure on f7 option number four white chose to play knight g5 plan but first he wanted to move bishop he didn't like knight g5 immediately because bishop on h4 will be closed by that knight. First bishop e7 to avoid closing bishop after knight g5, after black knight f5, now knight g5 goes on. Black can take of course on e7, but there will be benefits only for white. Rook e7 will be done with tempo, another rook will come to 7th rank, black will lose pawn on f7, and king will be in danger. Rook e8 happen and bishop is under attack, so bishop f6 was happened in game. What can black do? f7 is under attack, knight b7 under attack, black took, white took, and now king g8 is in danger. See? Very sad position for black knight is attacked pawn c7 and f7 are also weak rook e8 rook h8 very passive king with no space and no moves and soon white can organize even mate attack if he want to same time all white pieces are very well coordinating even knight c3 will soon help to white other pieces organizing decisive attack knight a5 happened and white could take of course a7 or f7 but still white preferred rook d8 so black must play king f8 no other possibility to avoid mate and rook 1 to d7 there is simple threat rook f7 and rook e8 with mate in 2 black must play knight h6 and now soon there will be some tactical shots so perfectly leading that position I'll play Aronim which finally got completely winning position and if you perfectly strategically lead your game there must be some tactic solution at the end which will end the battle knight c e4 even that knight goes to help to white either pieces knight c6 what to do and now i will stop for a moment giving you few seconds to see brilliant tactic Arnim which of course didn't miss it and won game very effectively rook f7 what to do knight must take knight takes e6 king goes to g8 rook takes rook king h7 and after knight g5 black finally resigned there is mate after king h6 knight takes f7 and another knight to g5 or rook h8 
or of course if black takes knight white takes with another knight with rook h8 so uh, there was mate in two and black finally resigned well i hope you enjoyed that video you could see in that video how black inaccurately advanced pawn to g6 exchange queens and after e5 he faced with huge problems with weak squares d6 and f6 well in future you should patiently make weak squares and care about them or of course avoid making weak squares if you do not have enough defenders of them like also wasted time for some maneuvers like h5 knight h6 knight f5 and white got space while black played some inaccurate moves and of course white was better development white has more space white had more active pieces which easily and effectively used weak squares in black camp i hope you enjoyed that video and soon see you once again with new prepared material bye bye